There were 15 homicides in Oakland last month. That's a 20-year high. Last January, Oakland saw one homicide. Let's talk about what's happening in the city of Oakland by welcoming Oakland Mayor Libby Schaaf into the conversation as we do every month. Thanks for joining us, Oakland Mayor Schaaf. Good morning, Garcia. It seems that the past six times we've talked to you here monthly, we always have to start with the issue of crime in Oakland. 15 homicides last month compared to one last January. We were doing so well as a city up until about last year. What do you think is happening, perhaps aside from the pandemic? Well, we were doing well. In fact, we had made national headlines for the impact of our ceasefire approach on homicides and shootings. We had cut them in half and kept them there for more than five years, gaining us national praise. Uh, but last year, that all fell apart. And Gassia, I can't talk about why that happened without talking about the pandemic, because this trend is something that most major cities across the country have seen. Uh, and we do believe it is tied to the pandemic, especially when you look at exactly when those homicides started to take an uptick. And also just the absolute anger uh, that was righteously unleashed during the summer. Um, these are all things that have added to people's desperation, their frustration, the shortness of their fuse. And we are seeing huge amounts of guns on the streets. Some intelligence would well, lead us to believe that there's a relationship between that influx of guns and the unemployment fraud that happened this year. And you're speaking about guns on the streets, and I'd like to bring your attention to a little piece of video um, that, that we've been showing this morning. I know you're aware of it. I, I think when I we know. show this video, we see a man who's on his front porch in Oakland, looks like he's maybe you know working on his laptop there, and we watch two masked armed men just accost him right there on his own porch, and they take him inside the home, and the last thing we see is the screen door shutting. So the, the man is the victim of, of a home invasion. This, to me, is every Oaklander's worst nightmare. He, he can't even work on his front porch without being violently accosted. How do you respond to video like this? This is everyone's worst nightmare. The trauma from that incident will last for the rest of that man's life. And we cannot have that type of violence. Uh, we are also seeing a very disturbing increase in youth participating in criminal activity. And that is why I am so clear. We have got to get our kids back to learning. And it's not just the academic skills that our kids get from our schools, but that support. But, but Mayor Teachers, Schaff, it, it, it doesn't appear, at least to my eye, that the, the men who carried out that home invasion were children. They appeared to be men. And I know we're going to talk about getting children back in the classroom, but I'm talking about what's happening right now to help protect Oaklanders. This is why it is so important that everyone watch carefully the conversation that is going up uh, on about reimagining public safety. Uh, you saw last summer there was a very close vote uh, that would have made dramatic cuts to the police department. Uh, we have had to make some very surgical reductions to keep the budget in line with, to keep the spending in line with the actual budget. Uh, but we've done that in ways to not slow down 911 response. But people have got to keep but the police uh, union, watching this. The the, the, the police union points to cuts in programs such as Operation Ceasefire, which had been a success. Cuts to Ceasefire, they say, are responsible for an increase in violence on the streets. The police union is trying to raise general awareness of the pressures to cut the police department in general, the pressures to allow the staffing levels to go below what have already been low staffing levels uh, by every national measure. The Oakland Police Department has long had the lowest officer per crime staffing of any department in America. And some of the financially necessary reductions that we have made are to preserve that staffing and that level of service for the long term. And Mayor Chef, quickly, we're showing some a video of the four candidates for OPD's next chief. Where does the search for the next chief stand? Well, I should be making an announcement literally within a number of days, Gassia. Uh, last Friday, I convened a panel of experts to help me 
interview these finalists. Um, fun story in Oakland, California, two finalists are actually married to one another. Uh, but right. I really want to commend the police commission for sending me four excellent candidates. And I want to thank Chief Scott of San Francisco, Dr. Jennifer Eberhardt, uh, the author of, of Bias uh, from Stanford University, uh, Attorney John Burris, uh, community organizer Amapalino. Paulino. I, I, I hate to interrupt again. I, I, I know that there have been many people helping with this decision, so we'll look for the name of the new OPD chief in a couple days. Two quick questions. Number one, do you think Oakland students will be back in the classroom before the end of this school year? I'm very hopeful. Every indication I'm getting from the school district is they are looking to a spring reopening. Uh, we do need to get back into the orange level. And I am joining together with other mayors to call on Governor Newsom to really help find an agreement with our teachers unions. Everyone has got to feel safe to get back to school, but we've got to get those kids back to learning. That has got to be our highest priority. I know it's mine. Okay. And then finally, I know that there is some more help for Oakland businesses on the way through the COVID-19 relief fund. That's right. Starting today and for six days only, uh, small businesses, sole proprietors, even nonprofits can get five to $25,000 grants. You can learn more at careliefgrants.org. Uh, very important. We've got to okay. keep these businesses afloat, encouraging reductions in our case uh, loads, but we've got to continue to be vigilant so we don't go back into a lockdown again. Right. They, and those businesses,